Ragged Cross. Sing it with me, everybody. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross Till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange it someday for a crown one more time so i'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last i lay down i will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange Someday for a crown, I am blessed. I am blessed every day that I live. I am blessed. Are you blessed tonight when I wake up in the morning? When I lay my head to rest, I am blessed. I am, if you're blessed, sing it that way. I am blessed. I am blessed every day that I live. I am blessed when I wake up in the morning and I lay my head to rest. I am blessed. blessed, aren't we? Good to see everybody. Isn't it good to be back in our family tonight, huh? Wonderful. Let's stand together and sing a great, great old hymn. Aren't you glad there's power in the blood? All right, let's really sing it. Here we go. B flat. Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil of Victory when there's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, 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 wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be free from your passion and pride there's power in the blood power in the blood come for a cleansing to calvary's tide that's wonderful power in the blood sing it now there is power power wonder 
working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. This time say power four times, okay? There is power, 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 wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, 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 wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Greet somebody and say, aren't you glad there's power in the blood tonight? Amen. And be seated. Aren't you glad? Wonderful, wonderful. There's no place like this place, and I forget the rest of that saying, but there's no place like this place. Well, we got, uh, had our Bible studies, and now our prayer power, hour of power, and then Sunday's coming. Sunday school, church, choir practice, evening service. And so we're in the middle of the week, getting charged up to make it to the weekend. Isn't that good? Yeah. These poor people go to church on Sunday morning and have to wait till the next Sunday. I don't know what they do. I'm afraid I'd fall from grace that many days. But we're glad to be here and thank God for all the time that's coming. And speaking of time, we spring forward Saturday night. Now, how many know what that means? That's not an exercise. The clock. We lose an hour. So everybody make a note of that so you don't come in church just as we're getting out. So be, be, be reminded of that. So um, we've got uh, several things to pray about tonight. By the way, the Blackwood Brothers are coming March the 26th. And if you have a, the oldest, one of the oldest names in gospel music, you'll love them if you hadn't heard them. But if you have a place you could take one of these, you know, and put it somewhere, then we've got a, 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 a Sharon's made a few of these that we can uh, put. Also, if every person, whenever they get this on their email or Facebook, if they'll share it, yes. share it'll it. go to different people that we know. Right. Everybody, everybody do that. That's wonderful. Good idea. Great idea. So let's, let's do that. We had a great crowd, didn't we, for the inspirations? I mean, those boys were on it, weren't they? I loved hearing old Roman talk about over there and over here. He's an old country boy, but boy, they love the Lord and sing for him. <clears throat> well, tonight, let's remember um, several people. Uh, Brother Mack and I were privileged to go and spend some time with Glennis. And she t said to tell all of you that she loves you and she's doing well there. And we visited her. And uh, if you want to go see her, you can go there. You can visit now. They don't, they don't have armed guards there anymore. You still have to put that mask on, and you don't have to wear your teeth if you do, so that's a good thing. But remember to pray for her. She's uh, doing well. Then let's remember to continue to pray for Teresa Westerfeld. Um, as she, I don't know, they're going to do, have we heard if they're going to do surgery? We don't know, do we? But I had a long talk, yes. She goes to the doctor next Tuesday. Good. Next Tuesday? All right. She's going to the doctor next Tuesday. Her foot's black and blue, and she has a soft cast, a cast on. So remember to pray for her. I talked to Ida for about 20 minutes the other day, and uh, she's having trouble breathing. They have to keep the air at about 70, but they're doing every kind of test this week that you can think of on Ida. So pray for her that uh, whatever's ailing her, they'll find out and can do something about it. And she said to share this with you. When she gets back, she's going to tear up that piano. Yeah. And if anybody can, she can. So come on home, Ida, as soon as you can. Um, there's a guy named James Greathouse who's in dire need, want us to pray for him, dire need of a kidney. So remember him. And Lynn is going to the doctor Tuesday. She has some ligaments torn in her foot, so let's pray for her. And uh, Brother Dave, if you'll come up and help us now, Brother. Also, 
But we need to make sure we don't forget to pray about the world situation. Yeah. Ukraine. Yeah. Ukraine. Yes. We really need to pray about that. It's a sad thing to see all that happening. Let me remind you something as Dave's coming. See this sheet of paper? How many of you got one? All right. Sharon works hard on this, and it's a job keeping all these uh, requests current and uh, then taking off the ones that the Lord answers the prayers. That's good. That's good, isn't it? And look on the back. But look this on the one, back of it. This is the special one because on the back of it is a letter from Emerity. I think she's already made general. I mean, she's a Tui, but uh, a great letter there and her address. So you, you can write her a note, and, uh, and she'll, she'll appreciate that. We're in safe hands, her and Edwin and, and, um, and Anthony, and out there taking care of us. Brother Dave. Amen. And we have God Amen. taking care of us yes. and taking care of them. And nothing can be better than that. <laughs> he is the all-powerful. But it's time for us to be that slender nerve that connects to the muscle of the Almighty. That's what our prayers are. We can't force God to answer prayers the way that we want to. We have to wait on God to answer however He sees fit. Now, why is that? Because He knows the future. What we may want right now may end up hurting us in the long run. But he has the insight. He knows the future. The hard part for me, the part that melts my mind, is he already exists in the future. Yeah. He exists in the future. So yeah. he knows it. For him, Amen. it's the present. Amen. Wow, that's powerful. That, that's amazing. But that's our God. He's beyond our wildest imagination. And that's why it's so amazing that he wants to hear from me, and from you. God wants to hear from you. He treasures you. He treasures what you say. He wants to know what you're up to. He wants to hear it from you. Now, besides hearing about life and our struggles, he also wants to hear about what's important to you. People that he knows and you know that are struggling. But mostly he wants you to understand him more. And that's what prayer is really about. As we pray, it's not just a long line of, God, I want, I want, I want. But God, I treasure you too. Amen. Please work in my life. I give you full reign. Do what's necessary. Make the changes. Well, on the list here, one of them says, per Dave Castle, Brooklyn Salisbury has Lyme disease and joint disease, only 25 years old, coming off from all medication. She passed on March 1st. She didn't think she would make it through February, but she lasted a little bit longer, and she graduated to heaven. At 25 years old, she's with the Lord now, and she knows it. And she did a terrific job of documenting her feelings and trying to get people to understand why God is who he is and how you can trust him regardless of the circumstances you're going through right now. And yeah, she died. She's dead. But she's alive. You got that right. Her body is dead, but she's alive in heaven rejoicing in what's going on. Let's remember all of those people that have been mentioned already. Let's also remember the, the Christians in Nigeria that are being slaughtered every single day. Let's remember people throughout the world that are struggling with their very existence and with the ability to worship in the way they want to. We have such freedom here. We take it for granted. But nonetheless, pray for those in the Ukraine. Pray for the Russian people who are struggling with this themselves. They don't want to be doing it. You know that there's a lot of them who are saying, no, I don't want this. But their leader is saying, this is necessary. Maybe we may not understand why. But God knows, and it's part of his plan. Amen? Amen. We have to go along with it. So tonight, if the Lord has laid somebody on your heart that you want prayer for, we want to hear from you. 
We want to all in, be an encouragement to you. So share with us if you have a personal prayer request. Our guys with the microphones will come back there, give them to you, and you can share. All right, we've got two. My friend, um, former daughter-in-law, she goes by her initials, AJ. I put her on the prayer list uh, last weekend, I guess it was, serious health issues. She says within minutes after she got off the phone with me, when she knew that I immediately went to my prayer warriors, she says that emergency room just changed. Wow. She said you could feel the calm, the sense of peace. She knew that we were praying for her, that all the prayer warriors were on, on, the, on the job. Amen. And she says that's what's so wonderful about our church. She says, I know that when I have a serious issue, that if you tell your prayer people, she says, I know it's going to happen. She says, please continue to pray her through this uh, liver issue she has. She says, I feel, I physically feel your prayers. Amen. And the peace that it gives. Wow. Yes. He doesn't always fix a situation, just like he didn't remove the Red Sea. He didn't remove the River Jordan. He parted both of those and made it safe for them to pass. And oftentimes, that's all it takes for us. Yeah. Yes. I remember Darlene in prayers tonight. Yesterday, I took her to the emergency the hospital and she had a whole knee replaced and she's at home recuperating and she's doing great she's walking on it and everything and she thank you for her prayer she let you know oh that's thank so you. cool yeah praise the lord yes Amen. jeff i want to thank each and every one that um prayed for this surgery that i've had and um your prayers was answered. They did it. The doctors did a great job. Amen. And I'm very thankful for the prayers. Amen. Amen. Yes. Um, I asked for prayer for uh, two co-workers. Um, husband, brother went home to be with the Lord today. Um, he'd been in and out of the hospital for a couple weeks. And um, not sure of his salvation, but we prayed today. And he went home about 310 this afternoon. Amen. Let's remember Patty, of course, and the pa our pastor and Darla. Yes. Absolutely. Amen. Sure. But, but to add on to that, what you said, Doris, we're not sure. I'm not really sure of anybody. You know, there's some people that show more signs and other people that show less. But we never know. God is the judge. He knows the heart. And we trust him, don't we? Right. Amen. All right. Who else? Yeah. Um, my mom is having surgery tomorrow on her back, and she just she watches on the live stream, so she just wanted to know if Amen. you get some prayers for her. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> That's awesome. Oki. Oki. Kobe. Gotcha. Over here, Miss Susan. Yeah, please pray for my friend Chris. This is the second time I've had the opportunity privilege really of witnessing to him at his urging wow. he's still fighting yeah. he's fighting the gospel uh, he's fighting faith but he's approached me twice um, to talk about God and Amen. Jesus yes. and uh, some of the things that came out of his mouth were amazing but he's still fighting it so I, I just pray that God is softening his heart and that he can come to faith so thank you for God your prayers doing miracles right my now. friend Chris I'm yes. telling you oh yeah that's so cool. I love to hear those personal ones that God is doing. Yes. This is a praise report. Lynn and I and Terry separately went and visited Masako at the uh, rehab center in Sun City Center in the last week, and she's doing amazing. She looks better than she ever has. Amen. So she's getting stronger. So, and thanks you all. Dave also thanks you for all your prayers. Amen. Yes. Anyone else? Yes. Will. I came over earlier and I said to Richard, I said, where's Sister Mary? <laughs> he said, it was too windy to bring her. <laughs> she's, you know, she's so frail. Also, I'd like to uh, remember my friend Nick. He's so close to getting well, but we need to pray for my friend Nick. Amen. Yeah. 
We do need to pray for Nick, that's for sure. He needs strength. The Lord will give him strength. We also need to pray for those who don't know Jesus Christ, like the one that Susan was talking about. I mean, that, that should be at the forefront of our prayers. Filling heaven with, with people is what our work is all about. That's the Great Commission. Uh, I'd like uh, for everyone to remember my daughter, Penny. Uh, they're going to be going north on vacation up to Nashville. But the uh, middle daughter is going to the Dominican Republic with Myrtle Lake Missions Group. And please keep her in prayer, Sarah. Yeah. Sarah. Let's remember Sarah. That's important. Going away. Anytime you're on the mission field, weird things can happen. Been there many times myself. Had some weird things happen. <laughs> but God's always in it. You know, he, he's always directing. You just have to roll with the punches as they come in. Anyone else? Okay, how about any unspoken requests? Anybody have any unspoken requests? Okay, thank you. God sees your hands. He knows. Brother Will, would you mind leading us in prayer tonight, brother? Would appreciate that. Our Father who art in heaven, we come to you as children. We know you're our Father, and you forgive us and understand why we are the way we are. We love you, and we love the way that you forgive us for our sins. We thank you for your son who died on the cross, and we thank you for this church and our leaders and our church family. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Thank you, Dave. If the ushers will get ready to come, and do we say, Brother Mac, do we say receive or take the offering? We receive. <laughs> Let's sing that song as they're coming. Some glad morning when this life is cheap, I'll fly away on God's celestial shore I'll fly away well I Let's pray together. Lord, just bless this offering tonight. Thank you for the way you've blessed our church family financially. Thank you that the sun doesn't set on our message that goes all over the world about Jesus and his love. So bless the gift and the giver. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Tommy's going to come and sing for us tonight. I'm going to put my glasses on. Then came the day who would have 
dream God would say Give him to me On this mountain You will prove It's you and Isaac Or it's me and you When I lay My Isaac down Broken heart But my father's proud On the altar here he lay Just to find it wasn't him He wanted me Most of us I dare to say have an Isaac in God's way on the altar God will prove it's not your Isaac that he wants he's wanting you Amen. when I lay my Isaac down broken heart but my father's proud on the altar here he lay just to find it wasn't him he wanted me on the altar here he lay just to find it wasn't him God wanted me Thank you, Tommy. Amen. Amen. All right, let's welcome our pastor, Dr. Mac Clements. Run up those stairs. All right. Well, it's good to see everyone tonight, and uh, good to see our crowd growing, which means our church is growing spiritually. When the prayer meeting crowd is increasing, that's a wonderful sign, isn't it? Yes, sir. And it's good to see all of you tonight. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being here. Exciting things are happening here at our church, and my, my, we're, we're working free, freebrishly, can I say that right? Uh, every day getting ready for Vision 2022, and um, could I just say to you, God is bringing it all together. It's all coming together. Pray for um, Brother Steve Brady and his dear wife and family, and um, God uh, works in helping them to uh, get everything tied up where they are and be able to get free to come here. So I just ask you to remember them in prayer. They're anxious to get here and want to be here and to be a part of the ministry and uh, the church and, of course, helping us as we step out on new territory and uh, beginning to spread the gospel every day. Yes. Not just Sunday, not just Wednesday, but every day from this church around the world. And that's exciting. Um, it's literally the fulfillment of the Great Commission. And uh, God has opened doors for us, and we have great uh, opportunity uh, in the future. Well, take your Bibles tonight. Oh, by the way, if you're worried about, I don't have my coat on. I had to sell it to buy gas. <laughs> I've never gotten up here to preach without, a, I just feel like I'm undressed. <laughs> but I got to, usually I go home every afternoon, on Wednesday afternoon, I come and work, and then I go about home about 3 o'clock and, and um, rest a few moments and get ready and come right on back. Well, when I saw the price of gas, <laughs> I decided I didn't need to go back home. <laughs> well, I didn't bring a coat with me this morning. And I didn't bring a tie with me this morning, but I found a tie in my office, so I put it on. And uh, but I, did, I went to Walmart to find a coat, and they didn't have any, a sports coat. I went to um, what's the uh, across the street, the outlet store. They didn't have one, 
And I said, well, Lord, I'll have to go without it. So anyway, that's why I'm dressed like I am tonight. Take your Bibles. Hope I didn't offend anybody. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Psalms 106. Psalms 106. I want to go to verse 7, and I, I told you 8, but I want us to begin tonight. We, we got into Psalms 106 last Sunday, last Wednesday night, uh, and we got into maybe the first uh, seven, eight verses. And, um, but um, I want us to look at the rest. We're not going to read the whole chapter, uh, but we're going to look at the whole chapter uh, in a kind of a summary way uh, tonight. So if you'll take your Bibles and look on the screen, you'll find it. Here is the introduction. And I'll tell you what, it, it, as I pulled out some key verses, and I'm going to share those key verses with you tonight, and they highlight everything that transpires with the nation of Israel and God during the, the, this time in Psalm 106. So we find in verse number 7, the Bible says there that our fathers understood not the wonders in Egypt. Now this is a, uh, talking about, of course, the nation of, of Israel and how God delivered them. And it, it's going to talk more about that even further. But it said they didn't understand uh, uh, not the wonders in Egypt. They remembered not. They didn't understand. Then number two, the Bible said they couldn't remember. Well, I have that problem. There's a lot of things about God I don't understand. Can somebody say amen? amen. And uh, there's a lot of things I forget. Amen. I'm glad I'm not the only guy in this room. But it said, uh, they remembered not what? The multitudes of His mercy. If there's one thing I don't want to forget, it's God's mercy. God has been good to me. God has been good to every one of us. Amen. The very evidence that we're here tonight right. is, the, is the evidence of the mercy of God. Right. I, I don't mean to be harsh and mean and cruel, but none of us deserve God. Right. None of us are deserving of, of heaven. Right. And, uh, but a merciful God has forgiven us of our sins, has saved us. And uh, so uh, we're here tonight, but we, we, I always every day want to be mindful that God has been merciful to me. I look back on my life. I've lived long enough now to look back on my life and, and how many things God delivered me from and took care of me and protected me and guided me. Uh, I could be in a heap of trouble tonight. Amen. Amen. All of us could. But God has been merciful to us. And here we sit tonight in church, worshiping and praising God and being thankful to God for all of His goodness to us. So we don't ever, but they forgot. Now look at here. But verse number Eight is such a key verse. Nevertheless, we're going to find that in the beginning of the chapter, and we're going to close with it. It, called it, it comes up again at the end. Nevertheless, aren't you glad? Nevertheless, he saved them. In spite of all of their forgetfulness, unthankful, and by the way, that kind of, we can all relate to this. It's not just the nation Israel. It's, it's God's people today too. We, we, we have a tendency to forget how merciful God is, how blessed we are. And, but God still takes care of us even though we fail to give Him glory. But look in verse number 8. Nevertheless, He saved them. I mean, they were so disobedient. They were so unthankful, the nation Israel. But nevertheless, He saved them. Boy, I tell you, I hang on to that, don't you? Amen. Nevertheless, God loved them. And I'm so glad to know tonight that God loves us. Amen. That God is merciful and kind and forgiving. And even though we fail Him, I fail Him every day. And, uh, but you know, nevertheless, He saves us. Now, there's another thought on that word, and I don't want to go too far with it, but you could use the word, nevertheless, He delivered them. The word saved means to be delivered. When we got saved, we got delivered from 
the sin curse. Well, the word saved and delivered, is, is, you can use it either way. It's the same word in the Greek. And so, um, so he, he delivered them. He saved them. And day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, he does that for you and I. And the Bible says there, nevertheless, no matter how we fail him, thank God he never fails us. He always never ceases to be my heavenly Father who loves me and cares for me and takes care of us. And so nevertheless he saved him. Why does he do it? For his name's sake. You know what? When he saved us, he put his, he put his stamp of his name on us. I'm his son. You're, we're, we're his children. Amen. And he's protecting his namesake. Right. We're his children. By the grace of God, when we trusted Christ as our Savior, we became the children of God. Somebody say amen. amen. And, and so I represent him, and, and uh, sometimes I let him down, and sometimes, you know, we let our earthly father and mother down. But they never let us down. They never disowned me. Hallelujah. And that's a miracle. Y'all act like y'all have never done nothing wrong. But God, for His name's sake, I carry the name of my dad. I carry the name now of the Lord Jesus. And for His name's sake, he protects me and takes care of me and forgives me. Amen. And I'm eternally blessed because for His name's sake He does it all. That He might make His mighty power to be known. God in His infinite, for by grace are you saved through faith. His mighty power is made known. The transformation power. When God works in our lives and we're transformed day by day by day, our lives are renewed and we become more, hopefully, like He wants us to be and become more like Him. It's the transforming power of Almighty God so that the power of God might be known. So when people look, you know, people look at us, they size us up. And I know there's plenty of flaws in all of us, but when the world looks at us, they ought to be able to see a difference. Right. Not that we're perfect, but they can see that we're moving in the right direction in our lives. Right. Spiritually, emotionally, and in every way. And so, that He might make known His power working in us. Greater is He that is in us than He that's in the world. So, we have the mighty, great Almighty power of God, the Holy Spirit, working within us to lead us and to guide us and to make known His works. Well, look in verse number 13 because we've got to summarize all of this. They soon forgot. I underline, these are just some key verses. Nevertheless, He saved them. But 13 said, but they soon forgot. How many Christians tonight do I know? That have soon forgot what God did for them when He delivered them. He delivered the Jews out of Egypt. Well, the world is a type of Egypt. And you and I were delivered out of this world, out of the what's going to happen to that. We're, we've been delivered from this. We know, we're, we know that the delivering day is coming, but. Technically, it's good is done. As he mentioned a while ago, God lives in the future. And I'm already delivered. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I know I'm here, but I know my eternal home is in heaven. Amen. But they forgot. Oh, we're so soon to forget how good God is to us. We really are. We're so soon to forget how much God loves us. Yeah, you know, it's just, yeah, I, I titled the message, The Sinful Side of Man. 
I guess I should have introduced my message first. <laughs> the title. But you know, even though we're saved, even though we know when we die we're going to heaven because we've trusted Jesus Christ as our Savior, Amen. there's a time that all of us have a tendency to forget just what God did for us when He saved us. Man has a tendency to be able to forget so much. We can always remember the bad. I don't know why it is. I guess it's a sinful side of man. We can remember the bad. We can remember the ugly. But we soon forget what God has done for us. When He loved us so much that He sent His only begotten Son, Jesus, into this world. We soon forget who we used to be. We soon forget the troubles and, and we drift back into sin again. We, we, we drift back into the old world again. We forget. That's what happened to Israel. They forgot. And they drifted back into idolatry, the world, and worshiping the things of the world. Um, they forgot His blessings of the, in the past, how God had delivered them. They forget God is their Savior. Uh, this all relates. We can just transform, change wording and use church instead of Israel. God's people today have the same forgetful habits that Israel did. There's little, if any, difference. Um, they forgot His wonderful works, how He had blessed them. I've seen Christian after Christian, God wonderfully blessed them after they get saved. And then next thing you know, they begin to forget a little, little forget. And next thing you know, they're out of church completely. They're back out in the world. They forgot. Israel did that. And, and, and it's unbelievable what they did. And I don't have time to read all of that. But if you would read verses 13 and on, you'll begin to see. They soon forget. Look at verse number 21. They forgot, again, it's, God emphasizes in verse number 20, they forgot their Savior, which had done great things in Egypt. We're living in Egypt. We're living in the world. But we're God's people. Israel was God's people living in the world, and He had done great things for them. He had opened up the Red Sea. He supplied manna from heaven, fed them every day. They never had to worry about anything, really. God took care of them. All they had to do, it's the same thing you and I have to do, they just had to live every day by faith. Amen. Amen. That was all that was required of them. And God said, I'll take care of the rest. Same thing in the New Testament. And then we always fret and worry about what, the, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do about tomorrow. Oh, what I'm worried about tomorrow. My mother was the biggest worrier you ever know. <laughs> that was just her tendency. She just worried, oh my goodness, I don't know. She, just, she was a worrier. But you know what? We, God's in control. Amen. And I know the world's in a mess. But God's greater than the mess of the world. Amen. And we're His people. Just like Israel was His chosen people. We're His chosen people. Amen. And God is going to protect us and take care of us. All we've got to do is not forget and stay faithful. That's all God requires of you and I. It's just stay faithful. So we find that in verse number 28, they begin to turn to idolatry. They turn to idolatry in verse, let me, uh, my eyes here, make sure I get on the right verse. Verse 28, they joined themselves also unto Baal and ate the sacrifices of the dead. 
There's a lot of meaning in that. But they went and joined, I could almost say it in a way that maybe we understand. They went and joined the social life of the unsaved. That's kind of a New Testament way of saying that. They joined to Belpior and ate the stock. Can you imagine? Now we look at that and say, how in the world could they ever turn on God after He had done so much for them? And I see it every day. And so do you. We see Christians who trusted in God and rejoiced in the Lord, and now they've gone back into the world. And we say, how in the world don't they remember what God did for them? And so, look in verse number 35. They mingled among the heathen, the Bible says. Verse 35. They were mingled among the heathen, and they learned their ways of life, their works. Don't that speak to us? I know we have to live in this world, but be careful who you mingle with. I mean, we have contact with everybody, but you know, there's certain, the word mingle there, they became closely associated with. And I've said this before and I'll say it again. You become like the people you associate with. I hear a lot of language, and you do too. But I have to be careful that I don't stay around those who use bad language. You know why? the Holy Ghost. (laughs) That'll wake you up. Where was I? I don't even know where I was. Boy, you start mingling with the wrong crowd, you'll get shot. But I'm going to say this. If you mingle with the next thing you read, I have to be careful. It's easy for those words to slip out of your mouth. I don't care how long you've been saved. And if I got up here and preached it one Sunday, and all of a sudden, and I started using curse words, and it, it can slip out. Now, don't look at me like I'm a... 